Welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise. I'm Jason. This is Whiskey Review number 95, where today I'm going to be reviewing the Balvenie Ton 1509 Batch 4. Now, sadly, I was unable to get a bottle of this, but one of the very generous customers at Milroy's of Soho, uh, we were at a tasting and the guy bought a bottle. He doesn't want me to disclose his name, but he gave me a sample of this and he said to me, can you go and review it? I'd love to see this on your YouTube channel. So a massive thank you to him as uh, we're gonna be doing the review today. Now I do have Monkey from the last video. If you didn't see the Monkey Shoulder video, go and check it out, I'll leave it just up here. And uh, basically, this is Monkey. He doesn't have a name, so if you'd like to give him a name, leave it down below in the comments section. Um, and also, he's actually picked out some comments from the last video, well actually one of the last videos which I think I asked a question about what would be your favorite Christmas whiskey. And so Monkey shortlisted two over here. Monkey, can I borrow my Samsung? Thank you very much. So he picked out two over here, which I'm going to read. And we're gonna start off with uh, Bronco Rog, who said, my Christmas dram is a Glendronach 18. And then he put a thumbs up, great review as always, Jason. So thank you very much, Bronco. Glendronach 18, I believe I reviewed it, and I think that's an absolutely superb, outstanding whiskey. And that's actually going to be in one of my upcoming videos, the Glendronach 18, because I think that one as well. It's, it's on my Christmas list, and I actually picked up one just the other day, so you will see it. Um, and then the second sort of reply in the comment section was, My Christmas Dram, well this is from Stephen Aldridge, and he writes, My Christmas Dram has to be the Glenfarclas 15 year old, or the Glenfarclas 105. Again, stellar choices. The 15 is actually one I actually own at home. And uh, the 105 is one I'm tempted to buy. I keep falling in and out of love with that whiskey. And it's something I'm really enjoying as well. So you probably see that. And on Twitter, if you guys don't follow me, I'm going to leave my links over here. Twitter, from tomorrow onwards, there should be a giveaway. It will be pinned to my profile, so go and drop me a follow. I'll be doing a giveaway on a Christmas whiskey up to the 20th of December, and then I will announce the winner. So you can be in for a chance to win yourself a bottle of some Christmas whiskey, as the poll was running yesterday. So there will be a winner of some sort of whiskey, and then I will decide on the 20th, uh, after retweets and likes, who wins that whiskey. So anyway, let's get back into the Balvenie Ton 1509 uh, Batch 4. Wow, this is an incredible whiskey. I did get to try half the sample before doing the video so I could get a bit of an idea of this whiskey. And then I did some research. So following my review style structure, the age in this whiskey is a non-age stated whiskey. They don't like to specify the age. And the reason behind is this is because it's a vatting. Well, it contains lots of different whiskey combined together. Now, in terms of the ABV, this is 51.7% ABV. There is batch three, which was one of my favorites. Batch two, which I didn't get to try. And batch one, which sold out like, boom, it was gone. Uh, I saw it on the shelves one day, <laughs> went back the next morning, it was gone. So, this does sell very, very fast. Um, the cast selection, now there is 23 hand-selected casts that go into the making of the Balvenie, that bottle over there, the Balvenie Tan 1509 Batch 4. And uh, they are 13 first fill bourbon oak casks, or they call them traditional whiskey casks, and 10 sherry butts that go into the combination. This is all together, massive, put together in the 1509 ton, which is gonna marry all these different flavors together, and then you get this whiskey. So, the distillery itself is the Balvenie Distillery, which you can see up in that top corner. Um, the parent company for them are William Grant and Sons, and the region is from Speyside in Scotland. And actually, specifically, I think this is Dufftown. Now, the price on that bottle over there is £220 for a bottle, which may seem rather dear, but give it a little time, understand the whiskey. If you get a chance to try it, and by the end of the video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, in terms of exclusivity, yes, it is exclusive, and it is limited to its batches. So if you do find a certain batch, you know, it's worth picking up all four, in my opinion. Every time there's a, a new batch coming out, one thing I'm trying to do is just pick up them and then do a comparison, and that way I can give you guys better suggestions. But they are exclusive to batches. And in terms of caramel color, I believe there is none, because it is bottled at 51.7%, so it is, you know, something of its own uniqueness. So let's first move into assessing the color, and again, I'll hold it up to the camera. Let me know what you think at home. If you do have this, or even if you don't, just leave it down below in the comment section. But this is like, I think, a burnt copper. 
got a very nice nose. So anyway, we're going to next move into the nose. But before I do that, leave down below in the comment section also your suggestions on what sort of videos you'd like to see upcoming soon. After review number 100, I'm going to be doing anything and everything. If you recommend it, I will give you a shout out. Monkey will read it. <laughs> Maybe I'll read it. And uh, we'll go through those videos. Anyway, let's move into the nose of this whiskey. So to begin on the nose of this whiskey, it's actually very quite sort of sweet and inviting. It does have a hint of spice. And this is more like a cinnamon sort of powder. It's not sort of like cinnamon bark. This is a bit softer, sweeter. Um, and I'm sort of getting sort of the Im image in my mind of a, like if you take a cinnamon powder and you infuse it together with honey and you just sort of mix it together. And if you're sort of having that, that's all what I'm getting on the nose. That's all combination of sweetness from the honey and the cinnamon. You do get a sort of nice fruity character. And this I'm thinking again now towards sultanas, quite ripe sultanas given their sweetness, a dash of sort of nutmeg sort of thrown into the mix. And then you're getting that citrus distinctive house style of Balvenie coming through. That sort of character of that sort of citrus. And in this case, I'm saying clementine. It's not so powerful. It's not uh, intense, but it's just so soft. Followed by a little bit of apricot, which really just make it added to that sort of fruity character. So off the second nose, you're picking out that sort of nice, distinctive vanilla character that comes through. More it reminds me less of the Balvenie 17, but this one's sort of like a vanilla cream, maybe a vanilla pie. Quite creamy on the nose. And then following behind that, a nice, distinctive, refreshing, but slightly zingy apple character. And this reminds me of those pink lady apples. Quite refreshing, but at the same time, zingy with their own character. So we're going to move into the palate of this whiskey. So into the palate of this whiskey, next up we have quite a lot of citrus character, really letting you know that it's there on the palate. Quite rich. This reminds me of a very vibrant, ripe Seville orange. Waxy on the outside, but then you're chewing the inside and that sort of burst of citrus character really coming through. Quite dominant. It's combined with a little bit of spice, and this is like a white peppery spice, a little bit of sparking interest on the sides of the palate. And then it works its way into a slightly sweeter, melted, dark muscovado sugar. There is a slight multi character as well, following behind. And then from there, you get a little bit of those dried fruits, raisins, dried figs. Chewy dried figs. As it's rolling around the palate, this actual texture on the palate is more towards, I'd say, a medium full. And then there's a warmth coming from the middle palate towards the back, and that's like a gingerbread. Like if you're having the gingerbread cookies or the gingerbread biscuits, it's all nice and chewy, a little bit of sweetness from that gloss of them, and then suddenly, boom, you're getting that warmth of spice that sort of develops the palate. Very nice whiskey. So next we're gonna move into the finish of this whiskey, and we'll come to our conclusions. So into the finish of this whiskey, it does have sort of a very, I'd say like a medium finish. It's not very long as I was thinking initially. It reminds me of sort of like crushed pistachios, um, a little bit of almonds. You do get that spicy aspect, but it's quite like a freshy spice. I'm going to say sort of star anise, soft peppery note. And then it's got a little bit of a sweetness that envelops the palate as well. And this is like sort of like a toasted caramel. A nice little bit of chewy note that sort of sits over here like a sort of like a chewy multi character. And then a little burst of citrus right on the back of the palate, which is ever so interesting. Wasn't expecting that. So, time to give my rating for this whiskey. And I'm gonna go here. So with a Balvenie ton, 1509, batch number four, I'm gonna give it a 90 out of 100 as I really respect this whiskey in terms of its price point, in terms of 225. I did read up an article saying that it does contain 21 year old plus whiskies, but I'll leave that to the team at Balvenie to clarify that. I don't want to say it if it's not true. Um, but for the quality of the whiskey and the combination of all these different flavors that are married together so well, it's a really, really good whiskey. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, I think Scotch Chest Dummies did batch number three on their channel. So I'll leave that maybe up in this top corner as well. Go and check them out. Um, but I think it was Bart, uh, Scott's actual bottle actually fell and then he got an, uh, Bart got him another one, which I think was so epic. But anyway, getting from that, I really like this whiskey. If I could get myself a bottle of batch three and do a comparison with a batch four, 
You might see that in an upcoming video because I'm trying to get my hands on a batch three. But um, overall, this whiskey has got sort of a nice complexity, a nice combination of character, the flavor profile. The price may be seeming a little bit high, and I do agree. I'd say maybe 150 to 180 tops. This was 220, um, but as I got this as a sample, I'm really grateful for that. In terms of does it need time, a little bit of time will probably reduce that little bite that you get from that 51.7%. However, it does mellow down quite gently just in itself as you're drinking the whiskey and just your taste buds become accustomed to that flavor profile. But I think it's a really overall a really great whiskey and that's why I'm giving it a 90 out of 100 because I really think that this is something nice and I really love Balvenie as well. So overall on that note, let me know what you think. If you've tried any of the Balvenie tons, let me know your suggestions down below in the comment section. Also reply to Monkey as he needs a name at some point this week. So on that note, I'm going to wrap the video at that. If you have enjoyed the video, feel free to drop it a thumbs up. Be sure to also hit the subscribe button, which will be over there. I'll leave some other Balvenie videos here, here and there. For the end of the video, if you wish to watch some other Balvenie videos. But on that note, this has been Jason Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for the next video.